Hi everyone and welcome to my latest video. As you know I've always enjoyed making river scenes and this one was a very enjoyable scene to make. I'll show you how I did everything from creating a really realistic mossy look to making a massive ancient oak tree and creating really nice water effects. So sit back and enjoy watching this stunning scene coming to life. So I started off by beginning work on the massive ancient oak tree and for this I used some very thin wire on a spool which I found in my garage. There was no great secret to how I did this, I just looped the wire back on itself to a length of about 6 inches at a time and then I wrapped another wire around that length of coil to create a kind of rope. I made several of these ropes and then I just kind of experimented with them really, twisting them round, looping them together. I had a rough idea of what kind of shape I was after with this tree, but nothing specific. Once I was happy with a certain formation of wires, I wrapped another wire around that formation to secure it. And in this way I just kept building up the tree, adding extra ropes to make the branches. There are many YouTube tutorials on wire trees, I've even done one myself, but this isn't your usual kind of wire tree and it certainly isn't your usual way of making them. It's safe to say I was making this up as I went along but that's half the fun isn't it? Usually I'd coat a wire tree in some kind of latex or PVA mixture but in this case I used green stuff basically because I wanted to continue sculpting after I'd completed the wire work. It might be a good idea to use gloves here because this is an epoxy putty. If you've got an allergy or a sensitivity to epoxy I would certainly recommend wearing gloves. Because I'm going to be rolling this green stuff out I need it to not stick to the surface, so I use some silicon spray. This is a makeshift rolling pin consisting of a textured rolling pin by Green Stuff World still in its casing. Then it was just a case of wrapping the wire tree in the green stuff 
and green stuff really is ideal here because it maintains a rubbery consistency even after it's cured and it's much more stretchy than something like milliput for instance but as you'll see I do use other epoxy putties in the sculpting of this tree, such as this grey own brand stuff from a hardware store here, and that's purely because I ran out of green stuff. And now to blend all that in and begin texturing the tree bark, I use some Vallejo earth textures. This is their desert sand and European thick mud. And this just gets painted over the entire surface. It was at this time that I found some extra green stuff and realised I needed to bulk out the sculpt a little bit. And then I used some wire snips to cut open the loops at the end of the boughs and twist them into little branches which are then coated in the mixture of earth textures. And at the end of a lengthy but reasonably simple process I had a rather nice looking tree trunk and boughs. Now I told you this wasn't your average wire tree. Here I'm making the main spread of branches using twigs. You could use twigs from a hedgerow for instance. But I actually was sent these by dioramapressipi.com and they just get fixed onto the boughs with more green stuff. And then I just go in again with the texture paint mix to blend them in. Now the main base of this diorama, as usual, is a board of extruded polystyrene which I cut to size using the Hotwire Foam Factory 16 inch 3D Pro scroll table. This wonderful table can cut all sorts of nice shapes out of your foam using router wires and ribbon wires, but I just wanted a nice straight edge. And I used extra blocks of extruded foam that I had lying around, these are just offcuts, to build up a rough landscape which I then carved into shape using the Hotwire Foam Factory's hand routing tool. Sculptor mould is my go-to material for building up landforms, but for this model I also tried some Knock Rock Compound, this is their granite mix, but first with the Sculptor mould. I tend to mix it into a fairly stiff paste. This gives me about 20 minutes to half an hour working time, depending on how humid it is. And then it's just a case of spatulaing or spooning it onto the surface of your diorama, working it around and just building up the general landform. Mm -hmm. 
and as it dries and stiffens, you can work it with your finger to smooth the surface. Knock rock compound strikes me to be some kind of grout. It's certainly more bitty than grout, and it's also a bit stickier, but you'll have to ask them what they put in it. I just mixed it again to a fairly stiffish paste, adding more water if I thought it was necessary, until it stood upright on my stick. And then I just kind of dolloped it on and spread it about into general roundish rock shapes. I was after a much smoother texture than this was offering me, but I wasn't concerned about it for the moment because I knew that it was going to be covered up later on anyway. After about 45 minutes of drying, this stuff is pretty rock hard. To apply the stones along the stream bed, I used some basing glue by WWS, that's War World Scenics. I just applied this neat. It's a kind of PVA, but it is stickier, and it holds this kind of material very securely. I made some larger pieces of stone by just breaking up a piece of landscaping bark. And I added further texture to the bank and the river base by using some bark shavings. Now all the landscaping's been done, it's time to apply the tree to the model. And first of all, I needed to cut off the roots at the bottom. I had planned on making little roots out of these, but at this point I realised that this wasn't going to be possible because of where I was going to be positioning it on the landscape. A big blob of sculpt mould allowed me to place the tree and then blend it into the ground around it. Extra twigs blended in with sculpt mould made for really nice exposed large roots. Now I wanted to build up the rock formation further so I used some milliput because once again I'd run out of green stuff. Again, I'm not wearing gloves, but you really should, especially if you have a sensitivity to epoxy. I gave the entire piece an undercoat with black gesso primer. This gives any more paint that I apply over the top a kind of keyed finish so that it adheres properly. For the branches of the tree, which were too difficult to paint with gesso, I used some matte finish black spray paint.
I had two attempts at getting the surface of the tree bark right. This is the first one. I had some crackle paint which I painted over a little too thickly. The cracks that appeared were too big and then I tried to make up for that mistake using a series of washes. These are actually all of the paints and washes I used for the entire model, not just the tree trunk. I started painting the ground and rocks before the crackle medium had dried, just to save time. Here I'm applying some Vallejo Game Wash Grey over the rocks, followed by some Vallejo Game Wash Green. I also used the green on the riverbed, as well as some other colours that you'll see in a moment. The earth undercoat colour was just burnt umber, and there you can see the crackle paint has started to dry, but it was far too thick and those plates are too unrealistic. I also used some burnt umber just over the riverbed, there's a loose stone there but that doesn't matter. And I went over the rocks with some Vallejo Game Wash Black. This just accentuated all the nooks and crannies. And don't worry, it dries a lot clearer than that. And then I used some Vallejo Air Yellow. This was just the only yellow I actually had in the room at the time. And that's when I started to go over the bark with the washes. Now these Vallejo washes are quite thick. They're certainly thicker than the Citadel washes and I just wanted to accentuate the cracks in the bark but when I went over it with some of the umber wash it pretty much obliterated any detail in the surface. So I'd gone from having some overly pronounced detail to having hardly any detail at all. So I gave up on the tree for the moment and decided to concentrate on the ground and I used some scenic glue, which is basically three parts water and one part matte medium, to glue down some brown grout. For the moss on the rocks I used Woodland and Scenic's Fine Turf. This is their green blend and it makes excellent mossy texture and it's just the right colour. This was another little mistake. I used some moss and lichen from Vallejo to go over the moss I'd already applied and over the edges of the rocks, but it really wasn't necessary. I ended up rubbing off most of it. And then I went over the moss with some isopropanol from CFS and some more scenic glue. By this time the bark on the tree had dried, so I went over it with some more crackle paint, this time only a thin layer, and as you can see it left some very realistic looking micro cracks in the surface, and instead of using the Vallejo washes I used Citadel's Nuln oil. and for the brown wash, Citadel's Agrax Earth Shade. Now I wanted a fairly fluffy kind of moss, so I used some diluted Mod Podge matte and went over the tops of the rocks and then I sprinkled over some 1mm dead static grass flock from WWS. I just used my hands on this, I didn't want to use a static grass applicator as I thought it would look too even and I wanted to completely control where it went. As a little flourishing touch I used some dried ground up leaves and sprinkled these fairly liberally over the entire surface of the model.
and so now the washes were dry again on the bark it was back to it with some layering spray by WWS and then with a damp finger I just applied some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf again their green blend where I thought it looked good this would simulate moss and lichen on the bark I don't think I've ever done so much toing and froing between elements on the model but now I went back to the ground with some 12mm grass matting by Gage Master. this is actually made for them by Nock and you can tear off bits of it and apply it with some Mod Podge or some basing glue or just any old PVA. To augment the grass and give it variety, I used some of WWS's wonderful tufts. They were kind enough to send me a few packets of these, and I'm using them quite a lot at the moment. I use a range of them. They're all self-adhesive, and as long as what's underneath them has been stuck down securely, they just press on. And talking about making sure everything is stuck down securely, I went over the whole piece again with some more CFS isopropanol. This is a wetting agent and it allows the scenic glue to soak thoroughly through the surface. I can't say enough good things about the amazing material Fabio at Diorama Precipice sells. Each piece is a small work of art in itself, and I'm so grateful to him for supplying me with it. Each and every piece can be used in so many different ways. Here I'm just dipping the end of some stems in some basing glue and sticking it upright into the static grass. Other pieces can be twisted together and made to look like fern bushes. Now really I should have finished off the bark texture first but I got a bit too excited and started applying the ivy. It's fairly fiddly to do but just keep at it and you'll get an absolutely wonderful effect. And this is where the Vallejo moss and lichen was actually useful as opposed to my earlier attempt on the rocks. I ended up applying it with the end of a twig and then just wiping the excess away with my finger and it created a really nice effect. And then I used some Vallejo Verdigris game colour to create the look of the more white or light green moss that you get on tree bark. I then dry brushed the bark with some more of the Verdigris and this really brought out the detail. A make or break time for any water diorama is, yes, applying the water effects. For this piece I used CFS Water Clear Epoxy, which is the best epoxy I've used for water effects. It's a two part resin and you mix both parts equally. I tend to use plastic cups just because it makes measuring it easy. But you can reuse these cups as long as you wash the resin out with a bit of isopropanol. And I will usually stir both parts of the resin into a fresh cup because you always get a bit of residue left in the original cup and this just keeps the volumes more equal. 
This gets stirred slowly for a good two minutes. I won't show you the whole two minutes here. And to tint the resin I used some more Vallejo Game Wash. Some of their green and some of their blue. And you only need a few drops of each. Any more than that will lend the resin an opacity that really should be avoided for water effects. Creating a dam for the resin is as easy as using some masking tape and then going along the bottom of that to seal it with some white glue. In this case I used Basing Glue by WWS because it was what I had on hand. I also tend to apply a thin layer along the inside of the masking tape just to secure the dam and then it's just a case of pouring on the resin taking it slow to avoid any overspill or splashes. I wasn't really worried about any scenic detritus getting into the resin because when do you see a river in this kind of situation without leaves on it? But you always get some bubbles in the surface of the resin and to pop these you can use a blowtorch. I'm just using a soldering torch here. You have to be very careful though that you don't set light to your scenery. You'll see a few puffs of smoke here. And you'll also see that my dam wasn't quite good enough so I added some more masking tape along the bottom. Also the resin tends to leave a lip where it met the dam but this can be easily removed with a very sharp blade. And any marks left by the removal of that lip can be covered over with the ripple medium, which is Mod Podge Gloss in this instance. And because this is a slow moving river, I apply the Mod Podge in a fairly thin layer, so that when I blow it around with the straw, the ripples it creates are fairly gentle. For more trees I used some extra twigs with some knock foliage and I applied some layering spray over the twig before breaking off bits of the foliage, teasing it apart and gently placing it over the ends of the branches. I then applied another layer of the layering spray before getting out my trusty flock box, sprinkling over some WWS summer 6mm static grass, turning it on and watching the fibres fly. And after another fairly profound layer of layering spray, I could apply some knock leaves. For the foliage of the oak tree, I used sea foam. This is some stuff by Gage Master. And I followed pretty much the same procedure as before with the static grass and the knock leaves.
The only difference here was that I actually applied a second layer of static grass, this time some Woodland Scenics 2mm, and I believe this was their medium green colour. And because of the sheer amount of foliage I was going to be using on this tree, most of it would stick together. So all it really required was a bit of basing glue on the end of each stem and some layering spray to make sure that it all clumped together nicely. And then applying the other trees to the model was as simple as boring a small hole, dipping the end of the twig in some basing glue and then securing the twig into the hole. And that was that, a beautiful, mossy, ancient forest. I have to say I was very happy with how this turned out, especially the ancient oak tree. I think the bark texture came out really nicely and the addition of those vines by Diorama Precipi really finished it off beautifully. I'd just like to take this time to say thank you to everyone for sticking with me and the channel. I haven't been able to post videos as regularly as I'd like or make big pieces as regularly as I'd like in the past few months. But I really hope you enjoyed watching me make this piece as much as I actually enjoyed making it. Most of all I'd really like to thank my patrons on Patreon for supporting me and actually helping me to make these videos. So thank you very much. And to all of you, thank you, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.